Okay. There we go. We are live. Open we the are project here. Yourself. Hello. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, we uh, we are here to talk about robots again. Um, uh, forgive me if I'm a little loopy. Um, being driven by caffeine because I was up way too late last night talking about Halo with my other podcast, The Streaming Heap. Um, and we talked until three in the morning. That's that was all we had a lot to talk about. Um, and on that show, it's funny. Usually Lynn is the one who dislikes something and I'm the one who has to defend it because I'm always wanting to make people like things, even if they don't, like, I don't want to make people dislike something they like, right? I want to make people like things they don't like, right? But for yeah. Halo, it was the exact opposite. Lynn likes the Halo TV show. I can't stand it. <laughs> like, I think it is awful. <laughs> um, so that was fun. Anyway, and we were up until, like I said, three in the morning. So I might be a bit loopy. I might digress like I've already digressed. We're like a minute in. We've already derailed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say hi to everybody Far who's the here. Um, Daryl. Hey, What's up? He's been here since before we started. He's been here for a while. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, hit that button. He wants to know if Mr. Pickles is going to be here. Miss, Mr. Pickles, um, he is here. He is somewhere, and he has been basically doing parkour all over the house all day today. <laughs> it's been a kitten. <laughs> um, and he is in a lot of trouble because he knocked down, and it's actually just to my left over here on the countertop gluing back together he knocked down my um uh my raccoon skull and knocked a few teeth out of it that are now a wall um oh my goodness. bookshelf yeah broke the case it was in I'm, I'm a little a little not happy with him right now he may join us he may not we'll see he got yelled at so. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah so we've also got vim vander straighten hello vim always good to have you uh let's see danny state is here hi danny danny Danny, Channel I, I love number the video that you posted earlier. Oh, he posted a video earlier, like today. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, on Ogo Pogo, it's the British Columbia Lake Monster. <laughs> oh yeah, never heard of that. That's cool. All right, mm. <laughs> I'll look into that. Uh, Indy Spots is here. Channel member and Patreon. Indy Spots. Uh, do do do. Michael DeCosimo is here. Always good to have you too, Michael. Um, is there a problem with the connection? Is there? Is it buffering for anybody or anything? Just let no. me know. It's good on my end. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Last week we talked about a lot of the good robot movies, but we've still got a lot more to go. I'm going to start with a really big one, and it's actually not just one movie. It's it's a whole series of movies, and I want to talk about the robots in the Alien movies, because we didn't ah, talk about that last week. Yeah, um, I can mark that off my list. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ash and Bishop as characters. I think they're really, really interesting. And the whole the way that like Ridley Scott treated androids is like this weird biomechanical thing that they had like spaghetti and pearl onions inside of them with milk it was really weird mm -hmm. um <laughs> i liked that but i actually really want to talk more about david from the prequels from prometheus and covenant because um, even if you hate those movies you have to admit david is really interesting he is the best thing about those movies um mm -hmm. i like how he basically is a robot who goes insane and becomes like this dracula like guy who lives in this gothic mansion in the like in an alien planet that's always at night i love that stuff i think it is fantastic and his whole like turn into a complete villain basically is a lot more scary to me than even ash ash was just kind of following orders and yeah he lost his mind a little bit but nothing like david david was was downright um disturbingly cunning um yeah, and there's Mr. Pickles. Oh, there's Mr. Pickles. <laughs> hey, Pickles, he, you're a pickle. He does look very excited to be alive. <laughs> you're in a pickle, pickle. He's he's definitely like he's looking around like he's enjoy it while you can surveying <laughs> for something. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, Sorry, uh, the robots know, from the so. Alien series. Does anybody else have anything on it? Yeah, I thought. Uh, yeah, I was actually going to bring it up um, from you know all of them because it's like an alien. You got um, uh, what was his name in that one? Uh, Ian Holm, uh, Ash. Ian Holm, Ash, Ash. Yeah, who is like you know definitely like evil, 
Uh, <laughs> he's just the he's just doing what the company commands him to do, kind of thing. And and then in Aliens, um, you got Bishop, and he's a little bit more um, Lance. <laughs> yeah, he's a little bit more human, you know, as far as like he seems to care about the people that are there. He's not. Just, he's more like an Asimov robot. He even yeah. like follows the three laws. Yeah, the three laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course you see him in uh, the beginning. Does, of Alien does it 3. even have a line? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he quotes he the first. He quotes he, the first. He even has law. a line where he talks about the. Earth. Yeah, he says, "I cannot by action or inaction the, harm um... a human being." Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. That was during that one, uh, that one he, scene. He where says something like... about how the, the... continue, uh, Thrash. Uh -oh. Go ahead, Thrash. Uh -oh. oh no, no, no! Finish. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> no, no, no! Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, he, I, I, I can't remember what I was trying to say now. Oh, yeah. Um, Bishop actually has a line where he talks about how Ash's generation of robots, um, weren't as, and I can't remember the exact line, but it's how, how they weren't as, um. Uh, altruistic as the current ones were. He right, right. He does talk about the older models. Yeah, yeah, they were. He said they were always a little twitchy or something like that. Right, right. That yeah. is what he says. He yeah. does say twitchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If John were yeah, here, yeah. if John were here, he's not here yet. But well, if John the, whatever, were here, he whatever, whatever, whatever model was always a little twitchy. You can't, you know, you can't hold right, that against right. us kind of thing. So yeah, but yeah. Oh, anyway, um, I, I, I love all the, the alien and all of them, or the the robot and all of them. And you make a good point there, uh, Eric, about uh, David and Prometheus. And what's the second one? A covenant. Alien, alien, alien covenant. covenant. Right. Yeah. Um. He. Yeah. He is. <laughs> he thinks he's special. Let's just put it that way. So. <laughs> hey. He thinks he's really, really special. So. Hey. Um. What? Les Anderson was in Alien vs. Predator, right? Uh, the actor who plays Bishop, yeah, Lance Hendrickson, yeah, he was in yeah. Alien well, he, 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 he played Wayland, Wayland right? Like Wayland Secu like Wayland Industries, something like that. Maybe he, maybe that's a precursor from when he built the android, Wayland. Yeah, and like the the same version of uh, like the human. There is a Wayland that shows up at the end of Alien Three that's also played by Lance Hendrickson, and like. He's supposed to be a human in the script, but retroactively, people who love alien canon have already determined he was a robot for some reason. I'm not yeah, sure but why. His, he was bleeding behind the ear. Yeah, his like ear was like this. Yeah, it was. It was off. Yeah, <laughs> and there was blood. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't milk. It was blood. <laughs> and he was supposed to play. He was supposed to play a robot in the Terminator franchise, but did not. Oh, that's ah. right. He was originally going to be the Terminator, right? Instead, he just gets shot in the back. That, that would have been an interesting, you know. Yeah. Oh, Scott. Scott, your tail is showing. Put that away. God, hello. At least there's no chocolate starfish. It, it's the cat show now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Bastet has invaded, so. Yeah. Okay, anybody else want to talk about the alien robots? I think they're really cool. And even in the video game Alien Isolation, they're really fun. Nope. Yeah. Okay, Lance, yeah. it's your turn. How about the class of 1989? Oh, good call. Let me pull that up. About the oh, alien robot, like the robot Terminator teachers. Right, right, right. I remember. Oh. Yeah, good cast in that movie. You had John P. Ryan, Dan Greer, Patrick Kilpatrick, uh, Susie Keach, Michael McDowell. That's a good cast in there. Oh, yeah, Malcolm McDowell. He was awesome in that. Um, Did you keep with those weird eyes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on, there was something else about that movie. I'm trying to remember what it was that I really. What was the name of it again? Of. Class of what? Class of 84. 84, yeah. That's oh, right. oh, 1984, yeah. okay. Yeah. No, 99. 99. Oh, 99. 99. Oh. When it's 100 cells. Ah, okay. That's a good movie right there. Why am I not gotcha, familiar gotcha, gotcha. with this movie? I'm ashamed of myself. Yeah. I, I've <laughs> Come on, Thresh. Hello. It's, it, I know. It's I, a good I'm movie. so ashamed of myself. Pan Greer's in it as, as, as a robot Terminator teacher. I, Hello. I can't catch them all, I suppose. Yeah, they all had unique power. They what all year had did it unique come out? Uh, uh, 1990. 1990. Yep. It's a yep. sequel to the class of 1984. Oh. Yeah. Instead of Roddy McDowell, it has Malcolm McDowell. Oh. <laughs> really? Was it McDowell here or McDowell there? 
Yeah. <laughs> just looking at some of the images in like Google image search. It's just, yeah, I need to see this movie. <laughs> I know, right? It's good. <laughs> is awful. 99 the one that has Pam Greer? I get them both confused. Is yep. that one the one that yep. has Pam Greer in it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. She got, she got a flamethrower for an arm. A flamethrower. That's it, so, the movie's so <laughs> awesome. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's really it, it, all you it, it, need to hear. Pam Greer with a flamethrower arm, right? <laughs> and their whole and their whole and their whole house on the covers they had oil everywhere in the in the camp pantry. So that, that was her that's how they survived. Oh wow, really? Well his middle name is was named Bishop. <laughs> that's interesting. I didn't know that either. See, I brought oh, that up. Vim uh, brings up that there's a comic version where Ripley and Lambert ask, or Ripley asks Lambert if she ever had sex with Ash, um, and th that was actually in the original script. Like that's in the the Dan O'Bannon script for Alien. Um, there's a lot more like talk about sex and sex like happening on the ship that in that's in the script. That's not in the movie. It's all subtextual in the movie, but like the script was way more direct. <laughs> Like, I think the captain of God, what's his name? I can't remember his name. He was like basically having sex with everybody on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Vim, yeah, you're right. It's not a real sequel. It's like a spiritual sequel. <laughs> anyway, and then, they did it, and then, they, then they came out with uh, part two of the uh, spiritual. I like the spiritual sequel. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was called the Quest of 1989, the, the, the Substitute. Oh, we vaguely remember that. That's like a yeah. I don't know if I ever. It had the guy that was in a step by step. Uh, such a Mitchell. Like yeah. Cody. I don't think I ever saw it. I just saw like that it existed. <laughs> I did, and um, I'll stick with the original. You're right. The, mm -hmm. Both of them were directed by Mark Lester, actually. Oh, Mark. Yep, yeah, Mark Lester directed it. Yep, he did. And roller boogie. <laughs> roller boogie. <laughs> oh, kickboxer. Yep. Love the kickboxer movies. I didn't see them until college. I had a roommate who forced them on me. And I'm like, wow, these are actually really good. Because I thought they were just stupid, schlocky things. But then when I actually saw them. I, like, Come on. Uh, <laughs> I thought they were trying to do the bus sport, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Miss. It's your turn, Damien. Uh, oh no, this is this is uh, Morris up here. Yeah, that's right Morris, now. not Mr. Pickles. Mr. Pickles. already stopped by and said hi, but yeah, now we get better ones up. Hi, now Morris, the big orange boy. So, um, I am gonna go with uh, since you you started with, with a catches. series, um, Eric, and in a you know a big one. I'm gonna go yeah. with the Terminator series. Um, oh, there you go. Excellent. Pretty much all of them. Uh, yep. you know, starting with, of course, the, the first one. And, um, you know, that's uh, just it, it's such a good. I mean, the first movie, you got to admit, it's like borderline B movie, you know, like the way it was shot and some of the actors in it and so on and so forth, other than Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. But well, um, that was James Cameron's first real movie after leaving uh, Roger Corman. So like uh, he'd been making B movies with Roger Corman. Gotcha. For a decade so before he this, made this the was just a step beyond that. Just yeah, exactly. A, <laughs> just <a> second, <laughs> a minus. <laughs> like, yeah. But Terminator 2, you got to you got to give it up for that one. That was a yeah. amazing movie. Um, you know, everything from the, you know, the, the groundbreaking effects of the liquid metal to, you know, just the, the lines in the movie and the, the, the writing, it was all, you know, the, the whole plot and it was all really darn well, you know, darn good movie, well put together. Um, but yeah, and then the Terminator, <laughs> what'd you say? So, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just laughing because I'm, I'm watching Eric kind of like mm -hmm. on the inside. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, get you don't like Terminator 2? <laughs> I like the filmmaking of Terminator 2 and mm. I do like all the quotable lines and yes. I like the acting, mm. but I don't agree with you about the plot oh, <laughs> and well, I'll just leave it at okay. that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I, yeah. There are, there's tons of plot holes in all of those. Things. It's just, I'm a time travel yeah. stickler yeah. and I, I okay. all I, gotcha. all I ask for is consistent rules and Terminator gotcha. 2 does not have consistent rules. That's you know, <laughs> good. Very good point. Very good point. See, and this is why we're all here. So we can all put in our opinions. Yeah. On things. 
<laughs> I've been it's much not... harsher on Terminator 2 in the past, but like it yeah. is a great movie. Yeah. I just yeah. I just nitpick the hell out of the time travel stuff because it bugs yeah. me. Yeah. Well, I mean the whole the whole series though. I mean you can nitpick. Oh the yeah, time like any stuff. movie, like the time travel is yeah. completely different from one to the next. <laughs> yeah, because I mean you know if if the if in the first one if the Terminator succeeded in ki killing Sarah Connor, then the Terminator you know would cease to be. It would be a paradox. Would cease yeah. to be because yeah, there's a paradox there. So. I mean, what's the? Because <laughs> then, because then, because in Terminator Two, we see that the chip that started Cyberdyne came from the past that created the. You know? <laughs> so yeah, there's yeah plot holes all through. Nice. All that. Yeah. So. Where was Asimov and his rules of time travel? Exactly. <laughs> his three laws. We and, need and three laws of time travel. Apparently, the Terminators travel. missed the symposium on the three laws completely. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so did so did like Skynet and all. They they just completely missed. Where was Asimov when they were writing Skynet's <laughs> programming? Is all I gotta say. Most so. of the movies that we're gonna be talking about have forgotten yeah. about the three laws. The three laws. Yeah. Over there. <laughs> Never read Asimov. Well, three laws. What three laws? <laughs> well, we're laws. going. We don't need three laws. Anyway, hey, anybody else got any other input on Terminator? Any of the Terminator yeah, movies? Um, I did the thing down in you know, Orlando called P two through time. The mm -hmm. ride down. The I, ride. I, I think I went on it once years ago. Yeah. That was a fun trip right there. Mm -hmm. It's like a light show plus movie. Mm -hmm. Same yeah. time. Yeah. The two guys went through the screen and then it became Edward and Arnold driving off on a bike. Oh, yeah. When, when was that? It was a trip. They had cyborgs on the side of the shooting like in the theater. Oh, my goodness. It you had know, to have I, been. I don't remember like when it was there, but like when I was working at Universal, like I never went to it. So it's weird that I never saw it. Maybe oh it was God. gone by the time I got there. It was awesome. Oh, I, I'd like to interject. I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised it took part two for the Terminator to even come up because I was like, going through my notes and I'm like, why didn't it was in mine too? And I didn't even mention it. So, um, yeah, I, I had to double check that we didn't talk about the alien movies too. So, <laughs> yeah, because we, we were all focusing oh, on like classics and, um, you know, a lot, lots exactly. of other stuff and, and, you know, kind of, kind of oddball movies in the first one there. So, well, I, I think also you got to say something the for the sequel. Go ahead, Thrash. But, 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 but yeah, the, uh, the, the Terminator, um, particularly the Arnold, I'm going to stick with the Arnold robot. Not that the others don't have, you know, qualities, but that. There was something really game changer about the Arnold's killer robot. It was just so alien. It was like like a complete, for as mentioned Asimov. It was the complete antithesis of Asimov's uh, robots. And Schwarzenegger just played him so cool. And um, I, I love sci-fi and war. And I think the whole thing came together. But I, I really think the idea of the Terminator robots were were really a slick idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh absolutely and it's right. become like part of our just cultural language like the terminators is instant classic you know jungian archetype now basically yeah <laughs> come with me and yeah a lot of that is arnold like if it had been lance hendrickson as much as i love lance hendrickson that would have been weird it wouldn't have been it wouldn't fe it wouldn't be right you know <laughs> well and and like schwarzenegger just has such power about him yeah that it's like we think like we forget with like chimpanzees that they're like eight times as strong or four times as strong as human beings right and that you're like i want to cuddle you and they're like ripping tearing you to shreds right like <laughs> they don't like we forget that they're that powerful and dangerous right the wild when you have a robot that is like we could forget that this thing can tear us apart right schwarzenegger that never leaves your mind no of course yeah because yeah. freaking arnold schwarzenegger right yeah. exactly <laughs> right and, and 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 then on top of it here i'm like on top of it like at that time he was just such a without being uh -oh. a movie star was a star right like right Schwarzenegger was Mr. Universe, all of this different stuff, right? And him coming in, it just like gave such power to that role. And then also like you've got the the Eastern European accent, which are you know like always sounds dangerous, right? It, like just on multiple levels, it, it was such 
brilliant casting that just really gave so much to this character. And then the flip in Terminator 2, where this thing that you're supposed to be terrified of is now your protector. And if Schwarzenegger today picked me up and carried me in his arms, I would be like, I am a safe little baby in this truly man-sized man's arms. Like, <laughs> come wow. with me if you want to live. <laughs> yes, take me wherever. Well, even Godzilla has switched sides a couple times. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, for sure. Good guy, yeah, bad guy. Yeah, yeah. So, he's good. He's bad. It's, it's he's a whatever. It's really amazing dynamic when they can do that. Yes, I want to give. Uh, Props to the TV show, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, for having oh. uh, the Shirley Manson Liquid Terminator. Holy crap! Oh, <laughs> yeah. right. She's even like better than Summer Glau. Like that's amazing. Oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> that show is I really good. If you've never seen it, you should see it. Oh, it's awesome. I watched the show. It. I must have missed those episodes. <laughs> it, like Shirley watch. Manson wasn't until like the second season, but she was the Liquid Terminator. Uh, yeah. So, like. I want to like point out like how hard it is to be to suppress your expressions, right? Yeah. And we tend to think that it's easier to do that than it is to like show expression, but ex showing expression no. is second nature to us, yeah. right? To suppress every emotional expression is so difficult. Right. And to be truly robotic, like Summer mm -hmm. Glau was in that show, like, I don't think she gets enough credit as an actress. Like, I honestly don't think she gets enough. Well, she no, was I amazing agree. in Firefly. So, yeah. Firefly, mm -hmm. she was also in the, uh, um, the I think it's Tr the Gifted, the Trinity. X Men TV show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's yeah, Trinity. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, I like, she's, she's great. She's great. She needs to be in more. I will say I the Terminator the movies have. The Terminator movies have all been plagued by this indie. They all ruin massive twists. Like <laughs> the the one with um I can't remember his name, but like the one that's already set in the future and Christian Bale is John Connor. Like they ruin the Sam twist Worthington. that Sam Worthington is a Terminator the whole time. Like that doesn't show up in the movie until like two thirds of the way through. It's a huge twist in the movie, but they give it away in the first trailer. Like even the teaser trailer gives it away. Like that's yeah. stupid. <laughs> and then like the movie after that Genesis, which honestly yeah. I've never seen, they give away the fact that John Connor is a liquid Terminator. <laughs> like, like why, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, I have, I have like the whole box set and haven't seen like the last three. Cause I was just like, I watched the, <laughs> the trailer. I was just like, man, I, I'm, out. I'm out. Yeah. I Part didn't, three. I did yeah. see the very last one and yeah. I didn't like it. So yeah. I'll start fate. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really like it that much. I thought it was okay for what it was, but it didn't feel like a Terminator movie to me. <laughs> How about Genesis? I never saw it. I never saw yeah. Genesis. Honestly, never did. Amelia Clark and Jai Courtney. And, yeah, I know. Uh, I never got around Jesse to Clark. it. Yeah. yeah. How about part three, though? <laughs> I like part three. Like, I do, th I do like that it's trying to, like, rectify that tension between the first movie and the second movie. It's trying to, like, trying to like uh uh i don't know square that circle it's trying to um i don't know what i'm trying to say i'm so sleep deprived <laughs> <laughs> i love that chase scene by the way in part three that's awesome that yeah, yeah. yeah oh boy i don't know why three gets such a bad rap i mean it's it's better than the ones that came after it so <laughs> well i have one question about three and i and i was i was not going to mention it because i don't want to be a stickler but we all are so i'm going to okay number three she has the power to control other vehicles, right? This is before yeah. right. automobile computers. They're just mechanical. They, they, they might as well be like a seesaw. How is she controlling them? What is she sending radio waves to? Or she controls the, the... She controls the ambulance truck and the fire truck. Hello. I don't, I don't know enough about cars to tell you. Like, I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> let, let's believe she can send radio waves to uh, uh, not a present-day car that has computers in it, but an old-style car that's basically just, you know, a steering wheel goes to the rack and pinion, which goes to the wheels. What radio waves uh, will be picked up by a steering wheel to make it turn 30 years ago? It was, And it was sad because that really awesome car chase, all, mm -hmm. all I can think of is, 
How is she doing that? How is she doing that? <laughs> if I she understand. Doing into? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get I it. If your car doesn't she's, have built-in traction control or the built-in whatever is counter steering measures that, or, or the like parking, you know, where it can steer itself. If it doesn't have that built-in, then yeah, it's just a mechanical linkage between you and the, you know, possibly hydraulically assisted between you and the steer, the, the, uh, the, the wheels basically so, so it, it's it's a little more complicated than a uh, wind-up toy <laughs> so yeah. i yeah not now they could do it now no problem but 30 years ago yeah. it's like ah. no no one possible so, so so i Big i'm gonna pull this out of my 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 magic hat um <laughs> aka rear end um and and vim and indy can correct me on this because i it has been so long since i've seen that movie and i honestly like nothing really sticks in my head about it but if she's controlling the electromagnetic field, then you can use the like just like you can use like magnetism to lift your to like the 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 speculation is Superman controls magnetism to a certain extent, which is allows him to fly, right? Because then you're you're controlling the electromagnetic field, so you can cause things to move in that manner. But I don't know if she's using radio waves or if she's controlling the electromagnetic She would need field. some really, really, really big magnets. We're talking like, you know. No, 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 no. If she can, oh, yeah. well, if, if she can there. generate it, or if she has the, the there. power They're, they're coils, right? They're a couple magnetic coils. Yeah. There yeah. You go. So I like, again, I'm just but saying, like, if she can Scott, control I the magnetic, yeah. Like, if she can control the magnetic field, like, however, like, she can do it. Like, if she can control the magnetic field, you can make the, you can start the engine, you can move the steering wheel. You, you can... could, theoretically, but I'm just saying is that, again, you'd have to have, like, very, very large electromagnetic magnets, like, the size of her entire body and probably several of them in a series in order to create a magnetic and, field. Unless she's from magnitude. the future and they have, like, empowered or, or, or superpowered, you know, or made things more efficiently. Just like, you know, Where, like... Where's my Dr. Evil? Right. 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 No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, like if in the 1970s, right. like, if we talked about, like, the concept of a computer in our pocket, like, mm. they would be like, no, you would need a computer the size of, right, like... Yeah. Like... And if you had a, an electromagnetic happen. field that strong, then why wouldn't you just, like, magnet magnet to the, oh, yeah. like, you know, other Terminator and bring him to you no, and I, just I, crush I him disagree. with electromagnetism? I mean, what would be like the I point said, of I, controlling all the other stuff so anyway damien sorry. damien i just said i'm pulling something out of my magic hat my friend like you're taking it a little bit too seriously my friend i gotcha gotcha <laughs> sorry I, the part of science fiction is science and <laughs> no but like the like, fiction. like thrash was saying we are all sticklers we are yeah, all sticklers and it's very easy to have like a little nitpick like that a little plot yeah. nitpick just completely yeah. ruin something for you yeah. that's how oh, i yeah. feel about terminator 2 right <laughs> Gotcha. It's it, it, it's it's like in um um uh Independence Day, you know the aliens coming nine hundred million light years. I was fine with the fact they have computers that are compatible with Apple Two. I mean, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yes, with a freaking Apple laptop. Yeah. <laughs> really? Like I can write a virus that'll interface with your computer system. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That that bothered me. That was the part. Yes, of the that one bothered me a lot too. That's always been. <laughs> there is a scene in the extended version of Independence Day that tries to like hand wave that away. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that effort, but it did make it into the final cut. So. <laughs> yeah. what, what did they learn the computer language? Of I don't the, remember uh... exactly what it was. I haven't seen they, it. In they years. hacked one of the one of the um, one of the the um, uh, the aircraft or whatever they are. <laughs> hacked the computer, learned its language. There may have been something oh, laying around point. that yeah, lab area of 51, but... Yeah. They had... Anyway, Still. Thresh, I believe it is your, your turn oh, now. Hey. Good, thank you. Yeah, you. Um, uh, I don't know any robots. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to go with... <laughs> I know. You There's know me, don't you? There's one here right now, I was yeah, going to say. <laughs> Ooh. I'll press the <laughs> Ooh, love it. Love it. We're, we're officially in Twilight Zone territory. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually, uh, again, because I have to be obscure, I'm, and, and you fans of old 70s uh, Saturday afternoon matinees on UHF channels will probably know this one. It was technically it was a TV show, but it was adapted. It was a Japanese kids show, and they took episodes and very haphazardly milled them together. Very good, John. I knew one of you would get it. Uh, John Sucker, Giant Robot. Yeah. Johnny Sucker Giant Robot. 
I right. when I was right. I love I need you. Johnny Sutton. And like if I get just like a Go ahead. It's like a like a Frankenstein Jr. Um, show, you know? Very similar to Frankenstein Jr. or Gigantor, but that, that same premise, uh, kid and friendly robot have adventures. And just everything about this movie was like, or the, this whole franchise was great. The man in suit monsters were great. Um, the villains were so much fun. I mean, the soldier, the gargoyle gang. Come on, the gargoyle gang. Uh, they, they dress like um, left bank socialists with machine guns. Uh, um, I thought they were more right. fun than the good guys. But um, uh, the, the, something about the, the giant robot, I don't know um, if it's because he looked Egyptian. I don't know if it's because like he was just always protecting does, the, the yeah. kid. Um, there, was, there was just something so cool about him. And spoiler alert. And I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna sound like a like an idiot here. Um, the scene where um, the robot sacrifices himself to save the Earth, and he does it on his own volition. In fact, he shouldn't even have power. He just does it. It's almost like like a mystical rising of the dead to do it. When he does that, I remember watching it at the end and being like, actually, the Clint. And I found it on YouTube in preparation for this show, and it still raises a certain level of emotion. And I'm like, it's it's a, a giant robot uh, killing an alien that looks like um, a big octopus. And this should be silly by, by flying into an asteroid. But no. That's Emperor that Guillotine, right? Really <laughs> Emperor Guillotine. Yeah. Uh, for the win. They, and, and they fly into a giant sun lamp. And um, there's, they all kind of salute at the end. And, but it's it, it, like... Again, this should be ludicrous, but it's not. It actually, if you can take something ludicrous and make a powerful scene, you gotta, you know, tip of the old hat. So yeah, Johnny Sucker Giant Robo is my opening gambit for today. No, that's a good one. Like I, I was raised more on Astro Boy, and like there's that Netflix TV show that came out last year of Astro Boy. It's called Pluto. That's actually like stock serious, and it's all about like. PTSD and war and death and it's freaking Astro Boy. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna have to. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I used to watch Robotech. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. It was a Maycross series back in the day that it came on in Canada when I was a kid. But uh, on certain channels, you had to catch it at certain times. It was like you had to know about it to like see it, kind of thing. So, but yeah, I used to love that stuff that, that was different that wasn't like live action well neither was astro boy astro boy was oh yeah true. yeah yeah get yeah, tetsuyo adams uh they were talking about a live action astro boy a while ago i don't know what happened to it probably because the movie they made bombed maybe uh, yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> oh, astro boy okay i remember him yeah yeah, he fires guns out of his butt. He always reminded me of Mighty Mouse. I don't know why. He just he is he is kind of similar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can see that. <laughs> he looks kind of like Mighty Mouse, but as a boy. <laughs> okay, uh, Scott. All right, I'm gonna go. Um... Go right back. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but thanks for coming. <laughs> I'm I'm going to go with a uh classic that I think is exceptional and that is the uh 1996 um Ghost in the Shell. Ah, oh, oh, you list. bastard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's actually 1995 originally, but I think it was released in the that, United States in 96, but That is no, correct. It, is, like it was 95 in Japan and 96 yeah, in the US. It. So yeah. there's no way as it, as I have it marked on my around. calendar so that I can cover it on my channel the second it turns 30. Nice. <laughs> nice. So it's, Choice. it's, and you can watch it on, on, you can watch it free on YouTube or on Tubi, Pluto TV, um, or if you have a prime subscription, but, yeah. um, I, I really love it because it's, it's a phenomenal movie. It really gets into the concept of what is humanity. Um, it is a, um, a cop drama like it it's like sci-fi it's a cop drama it's 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 a cyberpunk noir kind of yeah. in the vein of like um 
Blade Runner or yeah. Neuromancer kind of thing. Yeah, it's 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 just really, really exceptional. Um, I just watched it actually uh, yesterday just so that I can because um, I hadn't seen it since like 90s. And, you know, when I was like in college and, you know, things were going on, mindsets were not appropriate or, or yeah. were not like well for retaining all the information. I was like, I want to talk about this, but I need to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Um, and then also, um, this is something I did not realize, like there is a really famous actor that was in that movie that I came across and I was like, wait, no. And it is Heisenberg himself, Brian Cranston, like, oh yeah, he did a lot of voiceover work. Yeah. yeah. He was, he was Dr. Willis in that he was the American like cyborg Yeah, in the dub. Um, yeah. Cybernetic. Yeah. 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 In, yeah. In the dub. And so, um, yeah, no, no, no. It's a, 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 a really great movie. I highly recommend it. You can watch it on free on YouTube. Um, so the link will, when we post the, the links in the description, if you're like, I haven't seen it in forever, or I've never seen it, like it, it'll be right there. Click it, watch it for free. Like it's fantastic. Um, and there, um, I haven't seen the actual, like the movie that they made with Scarlett Johansson. I was a little bit like, I have. skeptical. That's good. Oh, is it? I love is it. it. A lot of people hate it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's okay. fantastic too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like that one. Like I was like, I heard a lot of bad things about it, so I was like, I'm not letting this. I'm not gonna. Let me and Damien experience. convince you that those it's naysayers are wrong. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Like, what was in a body, uh... in a skin tight bodysuit. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I, well, I, what was it? The the movie that I brought up with the alien invasion that she did or whatever. Like. Oh yeah, yeah under the I, skin. I, yeah, yeah, under yeah. the skin. Yeah. yeah. Like that's again. <laughs> like that's that's more than enough to watch it. But um, yeah, no, 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 no. It's it's um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great, 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 great movie. Def mm -hmm. Definitely watch it. Um, it is like there there are like three animes I feel like everybody should see and it's one of them. The other one's one being that, that and Akira Akira and, and yeah. the third one can be your choice. My perfect yeah. personal choice would be Perfect Blue, but you got to be ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> Princess Mononoke. I Princess Mononoke. Okay, okay, that's oh, a, that's yeah, actually yeah, a better Mononoke. choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, and Ghost, oh, Ghost in the Shell, the uh the animated movie. I, I watched that for the second time in my life much like you there, Scott. Um for the first time a couple weeks ago and yeah it's the that the live action movie is very cl follows it very closely for the most part for the most part not entirely but you know almost some of the th scenes are almost scene by scene scene for scene you know but nice. um but the uh it changes a few things around but like yeah. nothing dramatic it still yeah. like has the core idea of yeah. the movie in it yeah exactly and but the uh, the animated uh version or, or the original version is um, I, I found to be better. I, it is better. Um, it's just uh, I, I would I, I need to rewatch it with subtitles instead of being overdubbed because you lose a lot of the emotion in the voice, you know, of the I was going to ask you what your acted. opinion on that was. Uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't watched the I haven't watched it with just subtitles. I've watched it with the overdubbing and actually I, I, I put subtitles on and they don't match up with what they're saying in the overdubbing at times. So, oh, yeah, because they're based yeah. on the Japanese script. Not yeah, based yeah, on what not, the, the, not the based on the American script. script. Yeah, right. So it, it was a, it was a little off putting. I had to turn the captions off because um, I was kind of trying to do both at the same time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and it just it was like scramble, you know, it didn't work. So I had to had to turn that off. But um, yeah, usually I, I will defend dubbing. Like usually I think dubbing is, is actually a good thing. It can be seen mm -hmm. as a sign of respect. Like back in the fifties and sixties, yeah. that's what they used to think of it as. They used to think dubbing, you're actually putting in more work than subtitling. So it shows I, your appreciation of the art, I you know, completely agree. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the ghost in the shell animated movie, watch mm -hmm. it with subtitles. You just yeah. like, because because you get the intonation and it's all about stoicism and emotion mm -hmm. and you really mm -hmm. don't quite get that with the dub i as much as i love the dub actors as much as i love brian cranston mm -hmm. no it's much better with the subtitles yeah, but the dubbing yeah. they could have done a much better job on it yeah they did yeah i, I, I think admit, that's a problem yeah, with dub I agree with you thing. you lose okay. a lot of the inflection and whatnot mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, i'm sorry I, scott no 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 no. i like i was just gonna say like i like i i the 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 movie is a great movie. The general premise oh. and the story ah. of like what is humanity, <laughs> like is a a, a, a great um, like uh, concept. But I agree with you. the The voice acting just is not as good as it could be. Right, like Mr. I, I just 
I, I just like, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those that I like. I wouldn't mind. There's a, a lot of great voice actors out there that mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind if they were to like redo it, but mm -hmm. like with new new voice actors, even with the same script, like with with the current voice actors actor uh, out there, like they there's some really exceptional animated movies that they do phenomenal work with. Um, and you know, even in video games, hey, BK. Right? so I, I just, uh, hey. Hey. that would be one that I wouldn't mind if they reintroduced it with new voice actors. Right. Like what's his name that did, like did Kratos in, in, um, um, uh, God of, uh, God, of, no, God of Wars. Well, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Akira did that. Like the original dub was pretty terrible. So they made like another dub a few mm. years later. That's like so, oh. so much better. Um, yeah, I think that was Akira. I might be confusing it with something else, but yeah, I think that was Akira. I, I like if well, they when, were to do when, that for the 30 year anniversary. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like uh, if they were to do that for the 30 year, year anniversary, I think would be beyond worth it. So anyways, go ahead. Sorry about that thrash. No, no, we seem to be stepping into the toes, and I, if, if I do it to you, I, and you guys, I apologize. We'll get there in the end, I promise. Oh, I just wanted to say that when the American studios really realized what they had with Japanese entertainment, they stopped phoning it in and actually got real talent and started putting the effort in. The first mm -hmm. generations of dubbing were horrible. There was an old show, I believe, a friend of mine told me about. It was called B.A.D., Bad American Dubbing. <laughs> where it just is like, nice. It's it just is like like phoned in people reading off script with no inflection in their voice. There's no sense of context, and the translations are almost insulting. They also do something occasionally, which really gets into my skin. Not that I'm uh, totally uh, immersed in Japanese culture. There's a lot of it I d I don't know about. Although I'm learning it now, watching the Shogun reboot. Uh, but like like little things like um I'm gonna I'm just gonna pick on one for uh, uh, Kiki's delivery service. Uh, in America, uh, American kids didn't drink coffee, so her um house uh, the the person she rents a room from says, "Do you want more hot chocolate, dear?" She's pouring it from a percolator, and in more <laughs> you realize it's coffee. But oh, you're gonna be culturally correct. No, you don't. In Japan, kids drink coffee. I drank coffee as a kid. It's come yeah. a long way. <laughs> so did I. Decaf, but it was, I still drank it. Well, um, if, you, if you drink in cola, there's more caffeine than that. But there, there you go. I, uh, we'll, we'll count it. But they, they, they tried to Americanize a lot of them. And I think in the translations, and I think that hurts them as well. Yeah, that's kind of insulting, honestly. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, huge! <laughs> I do like watching some old dubs, like some old... Uh, Godzilla dubs where like most of the voice dubbing is is pretty like lackluster and they don't seem to really care or know what they're mm -hmm. doing. And then you've got like one voice actor who's doing like an amazing job. It's usually yeah. George, <laughs> it's usually George Takai to be honest, but like, <laughs> it's just Banana it's oil. really funny when that happens. It's like yeah. hey, look, it's Godzilla. The other guy's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's throwing everything. One guy is putting his heart yeah. and soul into it and everybody else is just phoning it in. <laughs> Look, the guy did the voice of Zoltar um, in Battle of the Planets um, did a lot of um, dubbing, and he was always really good. He was the main character in Rodan and that type of thing. I can't think of my name. I'm right, sure. right. I can't. I don't. I don't know the actor's name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he yeah. was always great. Yes. I love that. Well, character. We, we could do a whole show on anime. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or, or we could do a whole show on dubbing versus. Subtitles. Absolutely, yeah. I could, I could talk about that all day. Sure. Can we, can we do I, that? Can we do that, please? You know, sometime yeah. in the not too distant future. If I'm you want to, that. sure. Like I was thinking yeah. of trying to come up with other topics that aren't just us listing movies. Yeah, that could work. <laughs> time just travel. So, thrash. I want to. I want to. Dubbing movies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, try, try. No, try. I'd like to see a Back so to the Future dubbed into Japanese or something. <laughs> Have you ever seen movies where they like, I'm sorry to digress, but there are movies where they like, they take uh, a foreign dub of a movie and then redub it back into English so that it's kind of like going through Google Translate twice and it's all weird. I love <laughs> that. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, I want to hear Marty McFly. 
<laughs> like I, it, I, I like I apologize if this is a little bit racist, but like I want to hear Marty McFly in like the classic like <laughs> Japanese like intense, oh, you know, like like that like <laughs> exactly. like when he's talking about like exactly his like where you know <laughs> like playing the rock guitar and like oh, you know it's like that intense. Yeah, it's like you like, gotta look up Principal Skinner in Japanese. Like the uh, the the actor who does Principal Skinner on The Simpsons is yeah. exactly that. <laughs> it's like, what the I'd love to I'd love to see Doc Brown. Like you know, do, do they use like the, the like the voice from like a like a um, like a Buddhist monk, or do they use like the, the authoritative guy? For, you know, it's like anyway, we're burning know. content Wait, for that future episode. Yeah, oh God. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, oh, well, I just no. want to throw out. I want to throw out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thrash, you brought yes. up Bad American Dubbing. I found it. It's going to be on our list. It's on Venmo, or, or uh, not Venmo, uh, Vimeo or whatever, Vimeo. Um, and I'm going to put it on our list. So when you guys like get a chance, like go back to, to the uh, 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 description, find that, click on the link. You will be, you will love it. So, and there's a whole. You're a miracle worker. <laughs> you are <laughs> absolutely <laughs> okay so scott it is actually your turn uh, oh, i think my... the last one was giant robo right uh no it, yeah not just did no, ghost, ghost in the, the shell, shell. Oh, oh that's no. right you did ghost in the shell okay wow. so it's yeah, 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 that, yeah i brought up the, the entire rails. side sorry <laughs> we got we got so <laughs> sidetracked <laughs> That was fun, though. That was <laughs> no, that was a blast. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go back to the 70s, since all my videos on 70s movies seem to be the most popular. Um, the Stepford Wives. Uh, Sorry, yeah, spoiler. Dog, that <laughs> Thanks, Doug. I was going to bring that one up. Oh, well. <laughs> um, again, I did a video on this, so you should go check it out. Um, I love The Stepford Wives. I think it is a. it's a very, like... It's a very intelligent take on feminism from the 70s. Like it's not it's not as straightforward as you think it is. It's not just satiring 50s culture. It's more than that. Um and the way they use robots in it and what it means to have a robot and what's the difference between ownership and personhood and there's all kinds of stuff going on under the under the scenes in this movie. Um and I love it. I love the acting in it. I love watching some of the actors. Like there's this one um, character who's, who's a, who's a robot, one of the Stepford wives and she starts glitching and it's so good. The scene where she's just, she's just kind of like acting off. It's kind of like some drunk aunt at a, at a house party and she's going up to people and she's, I can't remember what it is she's saying, but she's saying the same thing over and over again. And one of the husbands has to like carefully guide her away because she's causing a disturbance because she's glitching. And I just love that scene. I don't know why it works so well for me. It's a great movie. And the twist at the end, I mean, everybody knows the twist because it's again, part of the culture now, but like, when it happens in the movie, it, it it's one of those things that snaps everything into place. Like the movie doesn't seem to be making a lot of sense until you get to the twist. Um, and I love it. And if you like, uh, what's that movie? Get Out. Get Out is basically the Stepford Wives. It's basically it is, the same movie. Is it? How yeah. That never hmm. dawned on me. How, <laughs> <laughs> one's rage, one's toxic. Mentality. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, Jordan Peele has admitted that he said, "Yeah, he definitely was was basing it on the story of the Stepford Wives, just taking a different tone or taking a different direction on it. But it is the same basic story. Different tone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was not intentional. <laughs> so, um, anybody else want to talk about Stepford Wives? Go for it, because I love it. Hey guys, how about did you ever see the, the remake? The remake with uh, Matthew Broderick." Um, yeah, they tried to make it too. They tried to make it too funny. Like I don't think it's bad, but it's just it's not. It doesn't take itself seriously, like at all. <laughs> I love that trailer, though. I love the trailer. Make yeah. one. One thing I, I, gotta say, no, I, I saw the movie years ago. I saw the movie years ago, and I, I gotta say, um, again, spoilers. The scene, because remember, at at one point, it's down to the main character and her friend, and then right. When it dawns on her that her friend has been replicated, turned, switched, whatever you want to call it, and that sort of reveal, it like literally, one of our favorites, Tug, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, that sort of 
Yeah, yeah moment, totally. Really just... <laughs> like, and oh there's the god, knife. You, oh you, god, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't bleed to you. It's, it's that that whole scene. Just I get chills just thinking about it. And that scene could have been done so poorly. The fact that they pulled it off so perfectly, I gotta. It's 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 that scene alone is worth watching the movie. No, I agree completely. Um, and also, if you if you're a film nerd like me, when you watch that scene when she actually does the stabbing, that's not her hand because like the actress she couldn't get her hand to stop shaking because it was disturbing her so much to try to like stab her friend basically. So it's actually the director's hand. He had to shave it so that it looks like more feminine, uh, but it's the director's uh, hand doing it. <laughs> the Tom Servini effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would have been great if it like you just, so it's like, like a it's big like, hairy ass hand. Like it's like it's like <laughs> this or whatever. Like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what happened to her hand? <laughs> that image is going to haunt me. <laughs> These days, we ruined that movie for so oh. many. <laughs> there's an Outer Limits episode um, where, like, there's an alien shapeshifter, and when he shapeshifts into a human, for some reason, he's got absurdly hands it's like his dead giveaway it's so weird <laughs> anyway lance i think it's your turn well how about uh emmy but bob westworld uh it's been mentioned in the chat but we have not talked about it so let's talk about westworld since we talked Yul about Brenner. the terminator yeah you'll bring my goodness Yul yeah you'll brenner game draw changer. draw <laughs> James Brolin. Uh, uh, Richard Can we Benjamin? talk about how much James Brolin looks like Christian Bale in that movie? Like it looks exactly like Christian Bale. Just it's look uncanny. it up. It, it's it's, no, it's, it's, it's disturbing. <laughs> yeah, Westworld. And then, I think did they do a part two? Yeah, there is a. It's called Future World. I've never seen it, but I do know it exists. Yeah. There was even a short-lived TV show. Yeah. Like not the not the current not the more modern TV show, but like back in the seventies, there was a TV show which had absolutely nothing nothing to do with the yeah, movies. It was but, bizarre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was about a spy network or something like that. Or... Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. But Michael Crichton was the producer, so like he was involved. It was just weird. He would do anything for money, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and the Western Showdown with him and James Bowen, he he shot me. <laughs> yeah exactly like i can't believe he's talking yeah <laughs> and like the whole the second half of that movie is just the chase between the gunslinger and uh james brolin which is like or not james brolin the other guy uh, i can't remember his name um yeah 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 uh, and like yeah that is basically the terminator and the terminator was based off of westworld like based off the gunslinger like the actual character of the terminator and you can tell here um it's also got the first like uh, digitized movie shot where like you're seeing through his vision, kind of like you know Terminator vision, but you're seeing he'll through be, the gunslingers. Yeah, um, and I don't know it, it, that scene where he like gets acid thrown at him, and you can kind of see his face melting away. I mean, that, that's that's some good stuff. <laughs> I mean, the movie itself is a bit off to me. It's a bit like um, unfocused. Like it keeps jumping around needlessly to other plots that have no bearing on the main plot um and that kind of bugs me as a movie goer but like the movie itself is fantastic and it was groundbreaking and i love yul brenner's the gunslinger that's an archetype for sure <laughs> well and, and it, it it is there was before yul brenner and after yul brenner um as 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 the robot it really was a, absolutely a changer. And he, he was absolutely amazing he was a national treasure also another thing i love about that movie is it's sort of a love letter to american science fiction when you watch it just watch for like the the walk-ons it's like oh he was in the fantastic journey and oh he was in uh time travelers and oh he was in i mean it, it's it's amazing the um uh all the the superfluous cast that you, you will recognize from other things if you watch for them. Right. And Alan Hoppenheimer, thank you. Isn't Alan Hoppenheimer in there? I think he is. Yes, yes, he is. He plays he plays um one of the oper the uh, Oppenheimer the operator. He plays one of the operators. Right. But yeah. he plays Dr. Wells in Sixteen Line Man. Ooh, I had forgotten that. 
And apparently Peter Fonda was in Future World. Mm. Oh, yeah. And of course, Maskatron is a shameless ripoff of the Yule Brenner robot with a Absolutely, a, yeah. A <laughs> oh, yeah. Off. John Saxon. John Saxon. He was John Saxon. Yeah, yeah. No, he was in two I'm, episodes. I'm, I'm okay. looking... I'm looking through the cast and I'm like, Dick Van Patten is like a, a yeah. banker. And I'm like, Oh, I love Dick Van Patten in that movie. He's great. He's so <laughs> I, good. I, I like, <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah. I just like, like there's, there's these actors, you know, uh, that are just like playing these like smaller parts that I'm like, oh, no. Mm. And so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Anyways. Um, it, and, and it's, it, Still has it an eighty four percent on like Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, wow. like some people like have some issues or or whatever. But like, um, you know, Google users eighty three percent, TV Guide seventy seven percent. Like it's a it's a really highly rated movie. Mm -hmm. And so, I didn't realize Michael Crichton like directed. Yep. It. Yeah, he yeah. directed it. He was a director. He directed a few oh, movies. Yeah. Um, Coma, Westworld. Oh, um, I love Coma. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was he was mad. What what happened was he was mad about the Andromeda strain. He thought the movie didn't do his book justice, and so he just wanted to go to Hollywood and do it himself. Basically, he, he was oh, like yeah. Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gonna snap I'll his fingers myself. and make it happen. <laughs> oh, one thing I, I have to say about Michael Crichton, and it's one of my favorite fun facts about my favorite author of all time, Brian Wilson, Aldous OBE. He actually, after the success of um, Jurassic Park, which of course made like um, uh, Hollywood sci fi writers, it, you could make real money at it. Brian Aldiss, who of course has you know, worked with Roger Corman, yeah. who did ripoffs of Michael Crichton all the time, Carnosaur, <laughs> among others. Um, the only um, really borderline successful film Roger. Um, uh, Brian Aldiss ever really adapted was, of course, Frankenstein Unbound, which didn't do really well, but it, it did okay, and it was done by Roger Corman. He went out and wrote Dracula Unbound because he was going to become the next Michael Crichton. Right. He actually wrote a book so that it, for the direct purpose of it being turned into a Hollywood adaptation, and he goes, this will make me a millionaire, finally. And he, when Corman was in England, they had dinner together, and Corman says, I can't film this, it's too expensive. And he just threw it back at him. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. And that was the end of Brian's career, I'm afraid. But <laughs> it wasn't a good book. <clears throat> and I'm sorry I had to tell that anecdote. Forgive. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he also directed that movie with Tom Selleck and the weird, like, robotic bugs. I can't remember the name of it. Run, run, hey, run away. Run away. Run away. Yeah, yeah. No, I was looking Simmons. I was looking at like the Great Train Robbery. He also directed. Like, oh yeah, Great Train Robbery. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, what? Yeah. yeah There's a whole that. part of Michael Creighton I never knew about. Yeah. He's also uh, he's also a giant. He's literally he was like six seven, I think six foot seven. Really? He was a gigantic human being. <laughs> Gigantor. <laughs> yeah, six nine. Them. He was I, six nine. It yeah, I right saw him school. speak once, and I'm like, "Who is this man? Why isn't he at the circus <laughs> or the NBA?" Like, <laughs> I'm six foot five, and I eat ponces like you for breakfast. Because he does, he does do cameos in a couple of movies, and every time he does, he's sitting down, and he's sitting in a stool that's specially designed to be really, really low, so he doesn't look like a giant. He looks like a normal human being, but that the man was huge. <laughs> I love that fact. To it. That's that's wild. Yeah. I did not know that. Wow. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I I can pick him out in a couple of different movies. I can't remember. I remember where he is in Andromeda Strain, and I remember where he is in Westworld, but I don't remember any of his others. I know he's done a few. Crazy. Anyway. All right. So my turn. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with a um a sci-fi classic. Uh, I'll, at least I consider it a classic. Um, which, which would be uh, THX 1138. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. All right. That's an interesting movie uh, and was, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Star Wars. Uh, George, <laughs> George Lucas. Lucas. George Lucas. <laughs> George Lucas. That was his, um, you know, basically his art film. 
um you know his his sci-fi opus kind of thing um that well he, he and was, francis ford yeah. coppola they yeah. formed american zoetrope when they were they were just yeah. they were legitimately trying to make art movies mainstream that was their yeah. whole goal yeah, yeah. yeah. And it didn't work for that one. Of course not. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't for The Godfather, we yeah. probably wouldn't remember either of those men. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but it, you know, it's still a great movie. Um, you know, the, there's you know the robots that are the peacekeepers in there that are you know we're here to help you. They're you know, terrifying. Don't don't be afraid. <laughs> we're here to help you. It's like the whole time, <laughs> like we're here to assist. How can we help you? It's like and they're just like beating Robert yeah, Duvall with sticks. Yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 And poking him and like zapping him with stuff it's like oh my god and just like uh you know uh the prison without walls it's just a big white room you just yeah for hours and hours and hours are we going in the right direction <laughs> that's that that whole premise was just that was amazing can you imagine oh, being that. stuck in limbo with like crazy donald Evil. pleasance <laughs> well among others sid haig is in there as well all right sid haig i forgot sid haig was in there yeah yeah, yeah. What was that yeah. movie where people are like cloned for body parts? Um, the island. The island. Yeah. The island. Yeah, yeah. I think the island borrows from this movie a bit. Um, Probably. Yeah. Just yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Um, just the whole idea, of, like that. you know, your world, your like in in THX. That's another Scarlett Johansson movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. In 1138, <laughs> they're they're controlling them through drugs. You know, it's like you gotta yep. take you got all these drugs you gotta take all the time, and in in just the the uh, kind of a. A parallel is in uh, in the island. They're they're like you know controlling everything they eat. Like you can't have any more bacon because your salt or your cholesterol is too high or whatever. Right, right, right. right. And, you know, it, 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 I know it's like completely different concepts, but still, just there's some parallels in there. No, uh, it's all basically you know. like Soma from Brave New World. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing yeah. I love about THX 1138, and a lot of people mm -hmm. knock it for not being original, for just like taking different ideas from different mm -hmm. well-known mm -hmm. dystopias, but that's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. I love that it's taking it all these different ideas all, yeah. and mixing them into one yeah. story. Mm -hmm. I think it works great, personally. Like, yeah, I don't have a problem right. with that. <laughs> oh, and the, and the part in that movie where uh, they like do what it was, what they called a, a brain lock or something like that. Um, oh right on him and he's like in the middle of like what i'm only assuming is plutonium or uranium manipulation little tiny hot rods those little rods that they were putting in the robot face right um, right yeah and uh and he, he, they, lock, they brain lock him or whatever and he drops one and it starts melting down through everything and they're like you know about to have a nuclear you know or a, a radiation leak because of it and they you know finally let him go and this like one girl in the one control room that did the radio or brain lock on him without authorization was like, you can't blame me. You know, it was just, I'm just doing my job. You know, it's just like the, the bureaucracy kind of attitude there where, you know, that whole scene where there, there's all these different people calling in, you know, saying, don't do it, do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it, do it. And then she just right. does it, you know, and, uh, that just, it was like the whole bureaucratic mess that that place is. It just kind of showed exactly. that there. Yeah. Well, they they have they have to stop the um the mm. uh the, the chasing him. Yeah. Because, because the he ran out of money. Out. <laughs> <laughs> they ran out of money. <laughs> You've exceeded Police your budget. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're gonna have to let that one go. It's like exactly. He's right there. He's right there. <laughs> like you can grab his foot. Yeah. And really. The robot, the robot even pauses to explain. Oh, yeah. uh, we, we 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 can't keep following you, but we do ask you come back. Or where's the yeah. effect? But yeah. It's oh, and I gotta tell you, you're right. I think I mentioned this when we were talking about box in the last episode. Mm -hmm. That single, like featureless, reflective faceplate robot style. There's something chilling about it, mm -hmm. and it works. They can still talk. They can still see. They still can do everything. But the faceplate is like a mannequin, and it mm -hmm. brings the uncanny valley to a whole new mm -hmm. level. Um, they really are chilling. One of them was actually played by Johnny Weissmuller uh, Jr. Speaking yep. of tall people, little fun fact there. <laughs> but and then one another thing that that I loved, and they were sort of head of the curve on it, was when they're when they're in the white prison, mm -hmm. um, and they meet the, the 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 really tall black dude who is mentally ill, but says he's a robot. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah, he says so he's a, like, a, a a hologram. Uh, says sorry, he's a hologram. Yeah. A hologram. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But 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 just the idea is. Um, but he identified <laughs> as a, it's like, no, no, they, they took your image and made a hologram out of that. You yourself aren't a hologram and mm -hmm. he can't reconcile it. So they put yeah. him in the, yeah. in the prison. I just, I could do a whole show just on this one movie. So it's a really <laughs> good call, Scott. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Really good call, Damien. Thank you for uh, mentioning it. Great call. You're welcome. 
I have a video on it on my channel. And I, and I did watch your video on it on your channel, too. So. But I love it. <laughs> I love okay, the, so car, the car chase scene in that one's great, too, by the way. But it anyway. is oh, yeah. surprisingly yeah. good. It's a surprisingly yeah. good car Even chase. though it's just all in a tunnel, it's like, yeah. <laughs> anyway. I know, but it's still very slick. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's actually scarier because yeah. it's in a tunnel. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, just because you, you're going to hit the wall, literally, mm -hmm. not figuratively. Yeah, and they used, uh, what were those? Um... Formula One race cars, I believe, from the seventies to do that one, but uh, something like I that. I used to know anyway. which ones they were. I think I got it yeah. from you, Tug. I think you mentioned it on your on your. Yeah, I yeah. think it was. I think yeah, they were F one cars. Yep. Uh, okay, so uh, Thrash, it is your turn. Me up, good, good. I will pick one here in no particular order. I'm gonna go with another that's made for TV movie. Um, as you know, if you, if you've watched my content channel, I discuss the fact that. Most of the best American TV science fiction in the 70s is effectively The Fugitive with a sci-fi <laughs> backdrop. Yes. And this was actually another attempt at that. It was something called The Quester Tapes, um, co-starring Mike Farrell. And it's, it, it's about this guy. He's a robot, but it's, it's sort of the, the premise is very similar to Gary Seven from Star Trek. Um, uh, aliens decided that Earth needed to be put on the right track, so they gave a series of robots to basically see to it that um, human beings are on the right path. And he's basically the, the last of his kind. And there was some glitch which um, affected his programming. So he basically just goes around doing wild stuff, not realizing how, how he has powers. He doesn't even realize he's a robot at first. But it's just the idea of this sort of, uh, again, uh, David Jansen-style uh, character um, trying to fight for good, and the twist is that he's a robot. Um, and it's, it's, it's really well acted, and I thought the chemistry between him and Michael Farrell was, was great. It wasn't picked up, and I always thought that was such a hmm. pity, because I thought it would, would have been better than a lot of the crap they were putting on TV at the time. So I don't know if any of you guys have ever, ever seen it, but it's called The Quester Tapes. And I believe you can still find it on YouTube, but it's very slick. <laughs> no, I never heard of it. That's interesting. Yeah, I've never into heard it. of it either. I'll check it out. I do dig deep. <laughs> no, that's one of the reasons you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> no, no, no. I did want to bring up this uh, Clonus horror thing, which I also hadn't heard of before, is basically... It was a 1970s version of the island, um, and actually there was a lawsuit that was settled for seven figures, apparently, where the island was accused of basically plagiarizing this movie. So that's kind of interesting. I had no idea of any of that. They do that on MST3K. There's an MST3K uh, treatment. Oh, is there? On okay. Yes. Well, I did not know that either. There was a bell ringing in my head. I thought my tinnitus was back. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like peter graves in it and dick Sargent, keenan Wynn. so yeah sure sounds interesting i gotta check it out it's terrible i'm sure if it was on msc3k it's gotta be terrible <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible it's tragic it's just <laughs> but i've seen it okay um so whose turn is it now i can't remember God, scott's by my calculations Scott. oh right. is it oh okay my bad sorry uh, uh, tracking down, I finally found the Quester tapes. I uh, knew you were looking, but I could tell. I could tell you were digging. I was like, I am going to find this, <laughs> <laughs> and I found it on the Internet Archive. And it's uh, it's a hundred. Uh, it's an hour and thirty six minutes. It's free. So, um, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to put this link in before I lose it. All right. Um. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna go with one that I watched with my daughter. Um, it's a newer one. It's a newer movie. Um, it it's like it's it's fun. It's actually it's it's massively big with the kids today, and it's uh, Five Nights at Freddy. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they are robots. I was uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's I, I'm not gonna give too much of a spoiler, but they are. You know they are unique robots we'll say um There's but it is robots done the list <laughs> yes but like uh um it's it's uh it's a pg-13 horror movie like my my oldest daughter who um actually uh my oldest daughter who turns 12 tomorrow um she um 
is squeamish with watching like um superhero movies and things like that because like she doesn't like the violence and and things like that um but she was able to watch this and and did just fine with that so if she can watch it if you were disturbed like myself as a kid, it, this is nothing. And so <laughs> I would say it's because I'd seen like all the alien movies by the time I was, like, I know, right? Nine, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I've seen Freddy, like Jason, yeah. this is nothing. So, so, but no, like, I just, I, I like to give that like little, um, you know, because it depends, it, you know, it just depends on your kid, what, what your kid can tolerate, um, what they've been exposed to already, um, things like that. But, um, yeah, no, like, I, it, like it was actually, it, it, you know, basically it's a, um, a Showtime or like Chuck E. Cheese, Showtime Pizza or Chuck E. Cheese kind of place where you have the animatron animatronic, which robot. is terrifying in and of itself. So. Well, didn't oh, yeah. Showtime oh, buy Chuck E. Cheese, so weren't they in the end the same thing? No, I think it's vice versa. I think Chuck E. Cheese bought Showtime. Like Showtime was went it the out other of way around? Okay. Yeah, okay. Showtime went out of business. Okay. Um, and and but they um, had the better robots though so yeah yeah chuck e cheese's were like in the wall and little frames moving around and you know at the beginning and then showtime yeah. had the ones on the stage so anyway yeah. so I, I, but. like but yeah they just apparently had the better business plan sorry i watched um, a little documentary on it not not too long yeah. ago but <laughs> you, you may be right i thought that i thought uh um I, I can't remember business, who but... bought who but they yeah. eventually merged and so all of the chuck e cheese's became like had actual animatronics and showtimes did too but they closed half the showtime locations or something like that so anyway yeah. they closed yeah. the yeah. one in they had one Chuck E. cheese um in hyannis uh well, cape mm. cod where i lived mm. and they closed it because too many teenagers were going there to make uh drug deals <laughs> <laughs> it it makes sense to me wow. i know i like I buy maybe, it. <laughs> maybe yeah. that's where the uh, that, that's where the uh, you know Five Nights at Freddy's robots came from. from You're right, you know, right? Drugged the, up the robots, concept, right? You know, right. One of those kids. <laughs> Show me the cheddar. Yeah. Show yeah. me the cheddar <laughs> comes yeah. from. One of those kids. No. One of those kids sitting in their parents' basement designed the Five Nights and Freddy video game, and then like. <laughs> yeah. Then it became, and they like they're like, I knew all of those deals that I made at Chuck E. Cheese would pay off. In <laughs> Can we talk about how weird it is that a video game that was basically just designed to be a jump scare simulator has this like ridiculously deep lore and crazy backstory, and yeah, is enough to yeah. like fill out this whole movie about like robot intelligence? And, like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever played the original game? It's, I have. It's it's I have never played it. Basic, you know. It is. It was just, basically just designed so that YouTube could have videos of people freaking out from jump scares. That was that's the whole point of the game. <laughs> it's like the first one is that, the second one is that, the third one is that. I, I don't think they've made like a real like real real video game into like the most recent one or whatever. Where isn't that one like actually like I have no idea. First I haven't kept up or with the like that, Five Nights anyway. at the yeah. Yeah. FNAF universe. Yeah. FNAF, yeah, I know, right? They've got books. Yeah. Like, they've got, oh, yeah. like, it, the whole it, series it, of them. Oh, it spawned, like, so much. And, and. Isn't like, Matt Pat in the movie? Like, doesn't he have a cameo as, like, a, like a waiter at a pizza joint or something? I don't remember. I, can't remember. I, don't, I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no, no, no. Well, in 30 years, you'll be able to give us a deep dive on it. Um, and so <laughs> that like, it was still I, alive. No, sorry. Oh, like, oh, there's Indy down there in the comments. Showbiz bought Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. Okay. What show is yeah, Bob? Yeah. Cheese? You're right. You're right. Okay. okay. I knew one of them. Let's no, trust Indy to get right. the facts. Yeah. Yep. Damien was right. So yeah. Oh, no, you were uh, right. You said Showbiz bought Chuck E. Cheese. I thought Chuck E. Cheese. No, wait, I did no, say you, Showbiz yeah, you bought said Chuck E. Cheese. Right, I said mind. Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what did I say? I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. So. Don't Re quote where's me. the stenographer? Read back my testimony. Yeah, I, not, I'm always happy to apologize when I make was. Ah, <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Is that on your list? That or is on my list. Yeah, okay, we'll yeah, save yeah. it for then. We'll talk about it then. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but no, like, save uh, um, it for later. The anyways, I, like, it was a great movie. It, like, it was a fun movie to watch with your kids. That I think is a, it wasn't a great movie, but it was actually surprisingly good. Like, that's what I've it, heard. It's it, better it, like, than you expect it to be. And and it's got Matthew Lillard. 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 Yeah. Yep. And like he's he's you know like he talked about how like. He was, you know, trying to get back in the, the, the 
the business and he was, you know, kind of like down and outs. And then this came along and, and it kind of blew him up again. And so, or he's got a, like a, um, a genre again, or like he did with scream. And so it's, it's, Mm -hmm. um, I always liked him. And so, you know, we seem to have lost Lance. Yeah. So anyways, it's, 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 if you have kids or grandkids, even like, you know, and they're into it, watch it and you'll actually, and you know, you'll enjoy it enough. It's, it's, yeah. And it's something y'all can bond on. So. All right. Yeah. I, I've been meaning to catch up on it because it, it looks fun. Like, and like I said, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I've heard it's like you said, it's not like great. It's not like one of the best movies ever, but it's better than you think it'll be. So, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, and it's, well, it's, it's something. I, it was fun. Bring, I, it it's, was it's good. good to bring the yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Damien. My 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 uh my daughter uh, uh my oldest daughter enjoyed it. I took her to see it in theater. She liked it. So yeah, and I, I thought it was okay. It was all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was, it was um, better than I thought it would be. Let's put it that way. So, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's a lot of movies that we're listing that <laughs> you cannot hearing. watch. Yeah. There's a lot of movies that we're listing that you cannot watch with your kids, and this is definitely one that they'll enjoy at yeah. bringing to you. Right? Like we often introduce our kids to movies this is one that they get to introduce to us mm-hmm. so it yep. gives them a little bit about that joy Thanks. that we get to okay so now it's my turn this is going to be our last round so this yes. is my last pick um this is a relatively obscure one but it's also a relatively new one and it's called robot and frank uh this oh. is frank langella plays uh, a a basically a retired hitman and a retired like uh not hitman but like a a a burglar a thief um and he's he's suffering from alzheimer's and dementia and he's starting to like deteriorate and his son who is a, a a terrible son is sick of visiting him and dealing with this dementia so he gets him a robot um and the robot is just there to help take care of him during his last days and what frank Frank Langella is also the character's name. Frank realizes he can use this robot to commit more crimes because the robot doesn't have any like sense of what's legal and what's not legal. So he's using this robot to commit a series of heists and it's great. And then at the end of the movie, slight spoilers, but not really, you kind of know where this is going. It all boils down to him becoming friends with this robot that he didn't like in the beginning because they have this shared camaraderie over committing heists together and you know he's frank is losing his memory and at some point he has to wipe the robot's memories in order to preserve the secret of his crimes and stuff but there's like a couple of twists in there it's really it's a cute fun heist movie with a robot and i freaking love it (laughs) and frank langella is an amazing actor he's one of the best so you should absolutely check it out (laughs) i had to bring that one up because i love it never heard of that one so yeah it's so good looks, looks fun it's a, though i'd like to see it so it's a, a phenomenal uh indie movie I, I, like um i i watched it for this too and it, it's um like uh it, it was one of my like original ones and, and it's free on pluto tv um and it it's it's really it's all really good lance fun. we understand technical issues no worries brother and crash like, is I still have- moving I, I haven't froze. I was going to say, and I, I was having uh, internet issues today. So maybe that's the trick. Maybe I have to have internet issues to continue my stream. <laughs> it's the pre-show jitters. The computer has pre-show j- jitters. As that's well. what it is. <laughs> but no, it, you just got to go like. Okay. It's well, yeah, no. It's freeze like, frame. You see the thing that I okay, I'm gonna bring the 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 psychological aspect to it. I knew like, you would if yeah, you'd seen it. Like, yeah, it's got Liv Tyler and it's got um Susan Ast- Sarandon is also oh, in it. Oh yeah. Dude, Ooh. oh and I don't want to talk too much about her oh, character does, because that's yeah. a big no, yeah. yeah. I know that like that like to me was heartbreaking and beautiful all at the same time. Right? Her character is a phenomenal character and um the sort of like this subconscious experience right that's associated with her is is just brilliant um but like Liv Tyler and I think it's Casper no not Casper Van Dien it's uh James It's Marsden. James Marsden. Yeah yeah, Marsden. yeah 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 James Marsden who played Cyclops in the X-Men um he he uh um like they're the kids of this bank robber who goes to prison for like 8 years and like like you see how 
injured they are emotionally, right? Right. And 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 that that component, there's this like childhood obligation, and I think, oh man, you know what? This plays into our 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 coming our episode. stream later today. Our yeah, stream, yeah, like our, our stream <laughs> plays really well into that. Uh, but like, it's like this childhood feeling of obligation to our parent, yet this you know all of those like this a emotional ambiguity and like with Liv Tyler's, you know, experience, the daughter's desire to make her dad happy. Right. Um, like that, that childhood, we, we just like it, to me, it's why I love psychodynamic, um, the psychodynamic model, because what happens in our childhood never truly leaves us. And, and, and unless we work through it and, and kind of separate our childhood from our adulthood. Right. And, and, and when we watch these movies, we're like, it's, it brings to light, like we connect with them because they're tropes oftentimes that we're all familiar with. And it just shows how like evidentiary this, this actually is. I, I get on Twitter and there's some people that are like, is psychology even a science? And I want to go, <laughs> oh, you like, like. <laughs> Like, oh no, there's like in the science community, there's like, even in, in, in healthcare, like psychology isn't real healthcare, right? Or psychiatry isn't real healthcare. Oh no, 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 no. Like it's, it's, and I'm like, you're a broken person. Like I get why you feel that way. Cause you don't know how to connect. Like you're an emotionally broken person. And so, and, and you don't understand how to, to like, that's the big core of what you should be doing as a healthcare provider. Anyways, my little rant, but like this, this, it, 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 it shows when especially a mental health issue comes into play, like Alzheimer's, like a dementia, whether it's neurologic or, or emotional injury, how frustrated and burnt our bridges can be with our family. This and, and, and to the point that we're getting a robot, we're done with it and we're getting a robot. Like to me, it is a it's a much deeper movie than people even like when I watch the reviews or I, I read up on it, read up on it and stuff like that. Like there were so many components that people were just not even getting and, and not even talking about. It is a much like when you sit there and look at it, it is a much deeper movie than you actually realize than most people realize. So great call. It's a great, it's a great movie and I want to talk more about it, but I really don't want to spoil things because there's, yeah. there's a lot of potential spoilers and I don't want to give them away, it but it just ended up on my two watch list. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs to be, it needs <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay, oh, so ahead, that's Amy. my turn. Thank oh, you. my turn. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and yes, Indy, I saw your comment about Star Wars. I am not bringing it up right now, though. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a little too late next... in the show for that. Yeah. Well, we're going to yeah. save that one for the next episode, I'm sure. Um, somebody will bring it up. Yes, we're not. We're not not going to talk about it. I'm sure. Yeah. Just like we're not not going to talk about like you know some probably, others like right. Yeah, There's some many others. others so, many others, right? Um, anyway, um, I'm going to go with something. God, it's like a toss up between three movies I have right here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Space Truckers. Um, has what? anybody seen Space Truckers? No. <laughs> no? Am I the only one? Oh I my think God. you're the only one. Holy look it up. moly. Holy moly. Everybody look it up real quick. Sounds fun. Space Truckers. So it's got ah. Dennis Hopper as the main character. And oh, okay. A, I'm sold now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a he is a trucker, a space trucker. So in the future, we've colon kind of like th think of um uh um uh geez the oh, God, it's a Stuart be... Gordon movie. How have I not seen this? Um, think of the expanse in that we've colonized the solar system. Okay, and he is a he's truck he trucks goods from Titan to Mars to Earth to wherever he's and he's an independent trucker and everybody else is like corporate truckers but he's like one of the last independents and he's driving this broken down old rig and he's late one day you know uh, George Wendt is uh his I guess the the guy that gives out the routes um he's late one day and he's like all pissed and blah 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 some shit happens he gets Anyway, I'm not going to spoil what happens in that one scene. It's kind of funny, though. There's a, an airlock or a, a what happens to a person when they plug a hole in a space station. Anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway, so he has to take this like load that he has to go to like a broker or an under, underground broker and take this load. That's like, you know, black load kind of thing. Um, you're not you know, it's a, it's illegal or whatever. And then, you know, 
some things happen space pirates you know lots of mayhem ensues um there are uh some interesting scenes in there and or concepts and um eventually anyway so there's these robots There Did are we these lose robots. Oh. That, oh, yeah. yeah. There are these robots that are like um, hunter killer kind of robots. They're like, you know. They're killing their. Uh, the, the corporate guy is going to try to, like, the main corporate guy who's evil is trying to take over Earth. And he's sending this load to Earth. And, you know, of course, Dennis Hopper's got to save the day. So Dennis Hopper and. Steven Dorff and uh, Debbie uh, Mazar are all um, uh, integral into making that happen. And it's a very, very B movie. Um, it's it's like, but it's so like 1990s. It's just like, you know, it's something you got to watch if you've never seen it. So you, it you looks just fantastic. See it. Like it's I'm just like looking at it on Wikipedia. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, it's fantastic. There's a quote here from Charles Dance, who's in the yeah. movie. And, yeah. you know, Charles Dance, a serious Shakespearean mm. actor. He calls this one of his favorite movies of all time that he ever did because it's so silly and he was able to play it so yeah. straight. He just, it's he just ridiculous. loves that. It's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. And Charles Dance does an amazing job in that, by the way. Yeah, Charles, uh, he does an amazing job in everything. I yes, love Charles does. Dance. Does. I, like, like Charles Dance, like for, mm -hmm. for younger people that are watching this, like from Game of Thrones, um, he, Tyrion, oh, yeah. uh, Tyrion Lannister, like George went Norm from Cheers, like, like uh, Jason was... O'Mara, who plays like the, mm -hmm. the voice for Superman and a lot of animated movies and stuff like that now, like, um, and Steven Dorff is a, 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 mm -hmm. a, like one to me, one of the most underrated actors. Yeah, he's great in that movie too. So, um, what was the oh, uh, what was it that um Charles Dance when he played uh, uh, the, uh, the guy in um Last Action Hero with the the eyeball? Oh, the yeah. eye, yeah, I, yeah. That's one of my favorite roles of his because he's just so, you know, he's just got it all figured out kind of thing. He's just so badass in that. But anyway, but yeah, great movie. I uh, I recommend it to anybody that likes a ridiculous, just stupid you know but fun movie um with lots of marginal special effects um <laughs> and like i said it was produced written and yeah. directed by stuart gordon the same guy who did reanimator so that's the kind of movie yeah. we're talking about here yeah <laughs> so yeah and just the um the the sets and the scenes in it are all uh it, it's very interesting so yeah i have to that is immediately the at the top of my list now because the grittiness fantastic. of it all is just so oh. yeah it's so just gritty for, and dirty it's just, just awesome for, so. Just for everybody, like it's it's free on Tubi, free on Pluto mm -hmm. TV, free on Sling TV, free on Roku Channel, free on Crackle, free on Flex, nice. and on the if you have a Prime subscription, it's you can watch it there. Like yeah. so, it it is very accessible. I think I watched it on Prime. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. You can see it just about anywhere. So, and that's just give you an idea of how space <laughs> truckers are everywhere. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's Very cool choice that, I, that I'm going to watch. So only 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. Keep that in mind. <laughs> that makes it sound even better to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just think it's misunderstood. Honestly, <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. I'll watch yeah, it and I'll yeah. get back to you. Yeah. It's a good movie. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Let's check. Okay. So thrash. Now it's your turn. Okay. I'm going to do something a little, um, uh, unorthodox for this one uh, for a change. <laughs> um, th these robots technically aren't in movies, although they were in one. They're more of a, a framing device for other movies. I have to, have to, have to do the robots, uh, Tom and Crow from MST3K. Okay, um, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just, they're just so much fun. They've been in air, like so many other things. They really have become a. What started out as almost like a lark thirty plus years ago have really become. Uh, culturally relevant, and just the idea of wisecracking robots you can sit back and watch movies with. Um, mm -hmm. If they drank beer, I would never leave the house. So <laughs> I, I, I got to say, I, I, I think they're they're great. I think they, while they're not technically really robots or more phoned-in puppet robots, um, I, I have to uh, throw them into the mix. I'm pretty sure I've told you this before. I know we did a stream about MST3K on Ian's channel, um, but my brother 
proposed to his wife by buying a life-size model of Tom and putting the, the engagement ring inside Tom's head. Oh. <laughs> Which is awesome. Wow. Yeah. I don't recall that, but excellent. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> they still have it on display in their living room. It's great. Oh, wow. They have lots of like geek swag because they don't have kids, so they can afford mm. it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like lightsabers on his wall, all kinds of stuff. It's great. I love going to his house. <laughs> Except the Did cat you... there hates me. The cat really hates just anybody who's not really? like his 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 parents. <laughs> Very territorial cat. Oh. Oh. Gotcha. We have speaking a... of cats. Yes. There's a there's a pickles. Mr. Pickles is back. Ah, he heard the word cat. <laughs> have any of you guys seen the most recent incarnation though? Because I do want to read this into the record. Um, they've changed. No, Crow's off the voice. keyboard. Thank you. Oh, uh, I thought you were talking to me. I'm I'm going no, near the keyboard. He was getting on the keyboard. <laughs> Um, uh, they have a new incarnation, which I think is great. I, I love the fact that it can reinvent itself, um, over and over and over again with with very little um, uh, loss of quality. But they have a new voice for Crow, and off the keyboard. Thank you. It's not just that it's a female voice. There's like the thing about the great thing about Crow is that he's a wisecracker, and there's that that brilliant inflection and whatnot. And whoever is doing the voice now. Or at least in the last one I saw, um, it's it's almost like the teacher from Romper Room, mm -hmm. and it's it's almost like nails on a blackboard. So if you're a big fan of MST3K, I have to warn you: the latest incarnation may not, you know, f jive with your um, uh, senses. But um, again, I, I, I it's 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 an outstanding franchise. Yeah, well said. <laughs> Thank you. That, that, and no, you're Scotty. Okay. Um, Last one. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with a, a newer one. You know, I'm going to leave. There's some big ones that I'm just going to leave for the, the next episode. Uh, but I'm going to go with a newer one. Um, it, it's uh, if you have a Hulu subscription, you can get it there. But it's uh, the creator. Um, ah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's 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 a newer one. It's got uh, Denzel Washington's son, um, like playing it, and he is exceptional. He is really really great. Um, uh, uh, really turning into a, a, a really great actor. Um, he was in um, Dwayne Johnson's uh, sports TV show on HBO. Uh, I can't remember. It. Anyways, uh, the name of it. But like uh, in this movie, there is a war between humans and robots and Denzel's Washington's um, job. And you can watch it, like see it in the trailer or whatever his job is to, to take out their secret weapon. Um, and it is a, um, it is in the body of a child and oh. it gets a little bit deeper, um, but it really plays on. Can I like kill this child? And it, it happens know, like, to be a robot. I mean, he's not, well, yeah, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but not just a, like, not like a, a grown mind and, you know, in, in a, in a child's body where you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you about the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem or whatever. Like, no, 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 no. Like, like, um, sorry, I totally slaughtered that, but no, like actually <laughs> like a meant. child, right. A child's, you know, mind, a child, like, and, and so, it hold on and then it's it's you know getting into this you know what is humanity what is a person what is you know sentience you know a lot of deeper questions and it's 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 a really to me it was a really good movie i really enjoyed it it, it i wouldn't say it's like one of the greatest of all time um but i think it's it, it, it follows the track of this concept of what is what does it mean to be a human? What does it mean? Like not even human, but what does it mean to be alive? Right. And what is sentience and what is, you know, and, and earnest questions that we are like going to have to really answer here. The more and more that we're developing AI, the more and more that we're developing robots and robotics. 
um, you know, when we eventually get the ability to upload ourselves into robotic bodies and Android bodies, like what is like sentience and, and personhood? And so it's, it's again, it's, it follows the, that track of, of these, this genre of mo movies really well. So when this episode is over, I'm going to be dropping my video on Daryl to the Patreons. So you, Scott and Thrash can watch it today if you want. Yes, um, I will. And I talk about a lot of that. I even have a clip from the creator in my video on Daryl. So I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to don't want to step on my own toes, so to speak. <laughs> I just recently watched the creator. I think thought that was a really good movie. And, uh, you know, yeah, like you said, Scott, it touches on a lot of, um, you know, interesting ideas and, uh, you, know, you know, concepts and, you know, what is a, you know, what is a person? What is what is a life? You know, you mm -hmm. know, what is sentient and uh you know the value that we put on that um and the whole idea it, what, what did kind of strike me about that movie was like they uh, it, you it portrayed the united states as like you know almost maniacally just you know it, and just you know itself with, yeah, without reason. <laughs> I like, oh, like, like, no, I, 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 they went a little no. far. They went a little no, I was far. waiting no, for that to drop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just that, like, you know, they would just go and, like, you know, I mean, yes, it, it's like, yes, that th there is some reality to what is portrayed in there, but to the degree that it's portrayed, it's like, no, that wouldn't happen. That's not the way right. that that would go. It's a little bit far, right? Yeah. We'll talk they about government and take half away personal, the entire like, personal world. Autonomy. Yeah, yeah. yeah autonomy, basically, invade but... the space of half the world We're to go after some robots. Entire, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, that's I not think some of the best work, science so. fiction is exaggeration, so yeah. that's fine. But it was like you know, <laughs> if if the United States in reality takes it to a level three, the movie said we took it to a nine. You know, right? I get you. I haven't actually seen it. Too far, so. I believe the expression is, "I exaggerate to prove a point." And it was directed by Gareth Edwards, um, which he's one of my favorite unsung directors of the last few years. Uh, he did Rogue One, but I mean, Disney kind of changed his vision for it. But he also did uh, Monsters, which I think we talked about oh, in yeah, our Alien Invasion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's done a few movies I really like, and he's his I, his ability we didn't talk to about Monsters. But I brought it up on the uh, in in our at the yeah we mentioned it yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I feel like he's a director who really knows how to integrate special effects and is very mm -hmm. good at showing uh, scale. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's like it visually. He's a, he's a great director. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been meaning to watch the creator since it came out. I really want to see it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because I'm a busy person. with. It's it's good. Life. It's not what I thought it was <laughs> going to be, um, it, but it, it was like, you know, it, it's a good movie. Yeah, it's worth yeah. watching. Let, me, let sure. me talk about the cast real fast. So. Okay. John David Washington, he's uh, uh, Denzel Washington's son, does a great job. Um, I don't remember Tom Cruise being in it, but he's on the cast list, apparently. Um, Ralph Ennis, um, Ken Watanabe, Allison Jenny, um, Danny McBride, um, and, and, and uh, Vin Rhymes. Um, yeah, there's just a, 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 a lot of great actors. Uh, Amir... Chandra Patel, like I, I've liked him in a couple of uh, uh, movies. I think he does a really good, great job. Haley Atwell, like there's a, 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 and Gemma Chan is phenomenal in this. Um, like there is some like not as well known actors that are f fantastic actors and they just do a really great job. And then you're talking about special effects. The, how natural the robotics look is beyond like it, it blows me away. Like it, it to, to me, it was like the liquid terminator in T2, how like what? And, 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 and like how awesome that was. This is right. Because it just, it, it looks perfectly natural. It doesn't look like it's, it's, it's CGI. It doesn't look, it, it looks earnest. And so it's it's like and the design like, is also almost it almost feels like it was designed to be the a nightmare for a CG artist because it's got like that hole like right yes, in the back of the right? head that you can see through like that's got to be a nightmare to to like render around that yeah <laughs> every CGI they, they artist was like, they did yeah <laughs> every CGI artist was like are you 
freaking kidding me. Like, <laughs> I'm already o only getting two hours of sleep. Now I'm down to one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they use the AI. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's 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 like it, it really is it, like the budget was 80 million um, and it made 20 million on it. Um, I think domestically and, and it, yeah, it was a it was a flop. Yeah. Yeah, but it shouldn't but have been. It was a good it movie. It shouldn't. So. It was a great yeah. movie. I but yeah. I think I, I I because it came out in 2023. I think like a lot of the movies we just don't have the purchasing power that we used to have, so we're not able to go out to the movies and buy, right? And and I think like again, if if we increased, you know, people's purchasing power, like we would like movies would do a lot better. Like and so so, so Hollywood the the problem is with the oligarchy and <laughs> <laughs> wrong 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 channel wrong channel, yeah. wrong channel. <laughs> wrong channel for that. but like yeah like it 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 got it's 67 percent on 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 rotten tomatoes at 63 percent on metacritic 74 percent though in, as far as google use users 6.8 mm -hmm. out of 10 on ibm idm uh, imdb like no 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 it, it's it that to me is an atrocity it's much better Mm -hmm. like it much better than that like i don't I, like i it's it's i i wouldn't say it is a phenomenal movie but like the the reception that it got is so much worse than I, it actually deserved it's, it's so much better it's better I can than just, quite a few of the movies we've already mentioned that did yeah. a lot God, better yes. than it you know, so. i can just tell just from like the 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 scenes i've seen in the trailers that like mm -hmm. it'll be a visual treat if nothing mm -hmm. else yeah it was so. yeah it's a great story it's a good story uh, i thought it was really good Okay. Yeah. I'll, it, like I said, I'll definitely check it out. I've been meaning to for a year now. So, <laughs> anyway, I, I guess we'll wrap it up here. Um, we're, we're well over the hour and a half mark. Um, mm -hmm. there will, of great course, show, though. Yeah, it is. Great. It's a lot of fun. Show. There will, of course, be a part three where we will talk about Star Wars yeah. and some other things. <laughs> um, uh, don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget to check out Thrash's stream tonight. And I believe yep. Lance is going to be on uh, my flock or Sarah's stream in about an hour or two. And then me, Scott, and Damien are going to be on the From Here to Paternity show in what, like an hour, like two thirty, right? Yeah, yeah. About and forty five minutes yeah. from now. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about um, taking care of old people. <laughs> yep. oh, can I just say one thing about my show tonight, by the way? Yeah. And, and because you were the one who actually inspired me to do this, whether you wanted to or not, um, that word game I played with song titles. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I decided I I'm going to do it again. And I've come up with a new list and I even have a working title for this new type of format. You know what it's called? No. Working titles. <laughs> <laughs> you have to work Excellent. I title. get No, that's clever. Nice. Like Perfect. <laughs> Nice. You are can a I, genius. Can I mention <laughs> something also? Like, yeah. uh, uh, so um, I have started a, a YouTube channel um, inspired by Eric and, and everything that uh, um, it's called Harold the Hatter. Um, it is it, um, right. It, it is going to be more family centric. Um, if there's anything like my wife and I are, are recording Boulder's Gate 3, which is a little bit more mature, there will be a mature label on it that like this this playlist is mature. Um, but like right now we're just doing Pal World. And so like if you have, you know, kids or grandkids, like it is a safe place to be able to let them a safe channel for them to watch. Um, I try to be very careful about like we say oofing instead of dying. We say like I try to be very like conscious with that. Um, no, it's very sweet. I've watched the first couple episodes of the Pal World stuff, and yeah, it is sweet. Yeah, and so it's 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 fun. It's you know, um, and it's just a, a, and then I'm also working on a, a FIFA series that that's been in the works, and so um, that'll be coming out. So, anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her Harold the Hatter. We'll we'll get Damien a YouTube channel one of these days. I know. Right? Yeah, Damien, come on, dude. You know? <laughs> well, he can hey, build hey, stuff on a live stream. I, I was gonna say I got too much stuff to do, man. I mean, I know, right? See me like set up a webcam of me like scraping paint off of my spiral stairs outside yesterday. You know, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> and then, we, then 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 boys and girls, you get the the wire brush and you just scrub and you're scrubbing. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Damien's be... how tos. Hey, that yeah, would actually go. be good. Damien's how tos. Like, uh, hey, like... I mean, how to videos are big on YouTube. So that's right. You know? Like, yeah. 
Harassment yeah. tattoos. Get somebody else to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> that would be great. So I, I I went on Google and as you can see, I, I searched this for my area and there mm. are these amazing local people that can do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> you just called you hand them these tours. You you hand them these these green, you know, payment uh, vouchers and <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they will do all kinds they of will stuff. We'll do all the work for you. <laughs> I have a drone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I think we're gonna call it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for see coming, and see you. See you later. Right. Now I'm gonna hit the button, and it's gonna take a minute.